What is the purpose of a CPU? It just happens to be one of the most important parts of your computer, and we're gonna dive into why. Welcome back to the channel, and today I'll be diving into the CPU's role and why it plays such an important part in the performance of your computer. In short, the CPU is responsible for executing the instructions that make your computer run. It's also connected to every component of the computer through the intricate data pathways on the motherboard. Each CPU will vary by specific design and architecture, but there are some common components of every CPU that work together to produce the amazing processing power that we use every single day. Let's first start with a comparative analogy to help understand what the CPU does. Imagine that the CPU is a company and that every component is a different role within that company. The first component of the CPU is called the control unit. The control unit spends its time directing and coordinating all the various operations and tasks that the processor performs. The control unit would be the equivalent of a program manager who manages all of the company's projects, determines how fast those projects get done, and assigns different tasks to different employees. The control unit does much of the same thing. It manages the clock speed of the CPU and the entire compute process. The control unit fetches instructions from the computer's memory and runs them through the instruction decoder. It will turn these instructions into electrical signals and then send those signals to the appropriate component to continue the process. Back to our program manager at our theoretical company. They've received instructions from the CEO, which is you, and have handed those instructions to a project manager. The project manager has determined that the instructions need to be sent to a group of technicians, and he goes ahead and sends them off. The arithmetic and logic unit, or ALU, of the CPU is these group of technicians that the project manager gave the instructions to. We're going to dive into the arithmetic side of the ALU first. This side performs calculations such as addition, subtraction, and multiplication, and it also does more complex operations such as division and square root calculations. The logic portion of the ALU performs operations such as AND, OR, NOT, and XOR. These operations are used to compare values and make decisions. If you're playing a video game, the ALU is going to be constantly making decisions and performing calculations to determine the location and movement of characters in the world and the interaction between objects. If you're typing in a text file, the ALU is going to also be responsible for processing that input. Once a decision is made or a calculation is complete, that set of instructions is considered complete. Back to our theoretical company. The project manager, which represents the instruction decoder, has sent instructions to technicians, which represents the ALU. While these technicians, which represent the ALU, are super smart and able to solve complex problems, they're really not sure how to manage their day. They don't even know when to take a lunch break, let alone when to start the next set of decisions and calculations. They need someone to tell them when to do this. While the ALU is calculating its current set of instructions, the program counter is keeping track of everything by storing the memory address of the next set of instructions. As the program counter keeps track and the ALU calculates, this duo will work through every set of instructions in a given program in the correct order so that the program executes as intended and produces the correct result. The ALU also works in tandem with another component called the floating point unit or FPU. This unit is the highly specialized subject matter expert that's on the technician team, and it assists with tasks that require floating point arithmetic. This type of arithmetic is typically used in scientific, engineering, and financial type applications. It's also used in other applications that require a high degree of precision and accuracy. Once all of the instructions of a program are complete, the results of that program will be displayed on the screen and you'll be able to see them. You might be thinking, okay, but wait, what's with all of the gigahertz and processor speeds that I hear people talking about? This is just how fast the CPU is able to conduct the operations that we just talked about. Hertz is the international unit that represents frequency. For example, if I were to throw an object in the air one time every one second, my frequency with that task would be one hertz. A megahertz is just simply a million hertz, and a gigahertz is a billion hertz. If I had one billion hands and I threw an object into the air from each hand every second, 
I would up my frequency to one gigahertz with that particular task. So if a processor is advertised as having a frequency of three gigahertz, that simply means that that processor is able to process three billion sets of instructions every single second. That's pretty wild. CPUs will have a base frequency clock, which is the minimum number of instructions that that CPU is capable of processing every single second. Most CPUs will have the ability to push past that base frequency clock as demand on the CPU is increased. Now that we know what a frequency is, we can go back to our theoretical company and check out what our program manager is doing. The program manager set a minimum deadline and there's a big giant countdown clock on the wall that's telling every employee when the project has to be completed. This countdown timer the program manager put on the wall is representative of the clock generator. The clock generator produces electrical signals or ticks that signal the CPU to perform a set of operations. If you have ever watched a competition rowboat race, there's always an individual called the coxswain who doesn't row, but directs the rhythm of the crew to row at a specific rhythm. This is the equivalent of the clock generator and the ticks that it produces to tell the CPU to compute. The clock generator determines the overall performance of the computer. The faster the control unit tells the clock generator to produce ticks, the faster the CPU will compute. So a quick summary and a real world example of all of the things that we just discussed. When you launch a program, the CPU is gonna receive instructions from memory and run through all of the processes that we just got done talking about. It's gonna do this until it has no more instructions to run, and that's when you're gonna be able to interact again with the computer and give it another set of instructions by either interacting with that program or closing it down. The processor is gonna execute billions of instructions every single second, which is gonna give you an extremely fast user experience. And that's how a processor works. As we dive into more components and we learn more about how they all work together, it's gonna to become apparent to you how bottlenecks can occur within your computer. By learning all of this, you're gonna be able to evaluate your own computer for bottlenecks. And if you discover any, you can replace that component with a better one instead of building an entirely new computer and wasting a bunch of money. That's all for today's video, and you can check out more Tectonic Systems videos by clicking here. And as always, Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.